A headline today so bitterly ironic you just couldn't make it up if you tried. Proposed Senate hearing on stand your ground laws postponed in the aftermath of the mass shootings at the Navy Yards yesterday. It's just a mile and a half away from where the hearings were set to take place. Senator Dick Durbin, who chairs the subcommittee that scheduled that hearing, was supposed to take place this morning, wanted to examine the laws that allow people in 23 states who feel threatened to respond with deadly force. After George Zimmerman was acquitted of all charges in the shooting death of Trayvon Martin, including second-degree murder, the National Urban Institute, along with Mayors Against Illegal Guns, took a comprehensive look at stand-your-ground laws and found that since 2005, on average, states with stand-your-ground laws have seen a 53% increase in justifiable homicides, while at the same time, states without stand-your-ground laws had their justifiable homicide rate decrease by 5%. And after Florida passed its stand your ground laws in 2005, its justifiable homicide rate rose 200 percent. Trayvon Martin's mother, Sabrina Fulton, was one of the witnesses who was set to testify at today's stand your ground hearing. Her story is well known. But the story of another teenager killed by a Florida man claiming he also did it in self-defense has not been so widely reported. 45-year-old Michael Dunn faces first-degree murder charges after opening fire on a group of teenagers last year in the vehicle next to him after a dispute over their music being too loud. Dunn told police, quote, from where I was sitting, a shotgun was coming at me. Well, there was no gun. After the shooting, Dunn said he went back to his hotel and ordered a pizza with his girlfriend. And it wasn't until he turned on the TV the following morning, he discovered he had killed 17-year-old Jordan Davis. Legal observers expect Dunn to use the stand your ground self-defense law in his trial, which is tentatively set for February. Joining me now is Jordan's mother, Lucia McBath. She was also supposed to testify today at the Stand Your Ground Laws hearing. And thank you so much for joining us. And my absolute um, condolences go out to you on the loss of your son. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. What would you have told the committee today if uh, you had been able to talk to them? I would have most assuredly let them know that unless we enact some common sense gun legislation, Things such as what happened at the Navy Yard yesterday will continue. The individual crimes will continue. The mass murders will continue. And we've got to take a stand. As citizens, we have to use our voices. And we have to get our legislators, because we are the constituents, we've got to get them to understand that they are accountable to us and that it, this is absolutely necessary. They cannot turn a blind eye to what's happening in the country. You traveled to Washington, D.C. to testify, and that says to me that you think there's some hope or you have some faith that that building behind you in that shot there can be responsive uh, to testimony such as yours. Why, why do you have that faith after all we've seen? I have no other choice. I have no other choice. What's happening in the com country, most assuredly what's happened with Jordan, just, it, it's heinous. I do not believe that our country was founded to be evolving into the violent culture that we are now. I don't believe that by any means. And I know that un unless we act, we're going to self-destruct. There are people who have pointed to uh, the Zimmerman trial and said, uh, in that case, George Zimmerman didn't even invoke uh, the kind of preemptory challenge that stand your ground legislation would have allowed him to, that stand your ground is a, a sideshow. It's not really an issue. It's only applicable in a very small amount of cases. What do you say to that? That is absolutely not the truth. If you look at the statistics specifically in Florida, most of those, the stand your ground uh, cases that we've seen there, just after it's been enacted in 2005, there have been 52 percent more cases that have happened, 52 percent more um, um, chances and, 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 and ability, the ability for people to stand behind the law and use the law as a loophole to shoot first and ask questions later. The stand your ground law is it's definitely just something that is just completely destructive, and it has to be amended, repealed, whatever we need to do. Lucia McBath, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much.